the terrorist or in the pawn but what exactly is the cause is the one which has to be found out and they are also fellow human beings the jihad what is jihad is a struggle you struggle to earn more and give charity you struggle more and more to help the fellow human beings to feed the poor to look after the downtrodden to heal the sick and the suffering the struggle is not to take away life the struggle is to to help life to thrive well in a happy mood i am a practicing physician and a consultant nephrologist for over four decades 40 years in this profession fighting illness with hope and optimism has only reinforced one important fact of life that life is very precious every life is a precious gift to be respected and treated with care today life exists even after death a dead man can save 11 lives with his two kidneys two eyes two lungs one heart one liver one pancreas provided the organs are harvested in time of course the soul is indestructible that there is always a chance that when a person dies he goes home he doesn't die he lives he goes and lives in his home living is possible only if we learn to live in harmony learning to care for our fellow human being expressing our respect and kindness it is in each human being that the anim unmanifest god manifests himself the godliness in man is manifested in his unselfish ability to give give food for the hungry give books to the poor for education give medicine for the sick give love to the needy and neglected young or old ones give a smile of hope to the depressed and deprived love is the law of life where there is love there is a touch of divine where there is hatred there is a devil in that particular individual he has to be counseled and isn't that what religion is all about to be good and too good the secret of religion lies not in theories but in practice the basic aim of religion is to bring peace to man mahatma gandhi regarded non violence as his religion today it is very very important that we follow the principles of the father of the nation everyone must be happy here and now the book from which to learn religion is our own mind and heart we have to remember it is feeling that is life strength and vitality you must have muscles of iron nerves of steel feel like christ you will be christ feel like buddha and you will be buddha religion is the manifestation of the natural strength that is in man man strength or his tolerance love unselfishness generosity truthfulness and combined with faith differences create gaps and we need to reap love not hatred out of diversity and to do so we need to release the long forgotten value of our tolerance to recapitulate mahatma gandhi quote if you take away one eye for i the whole world will become blind also he said if only christians are true christians and follow the principles of christianity there will not be one hindu in india so the basic principles of human life is more important than the religion and other unimportant matters so let us teach ourselves to so 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 love where there is hatred to pardon where there is injury our brother said forgive i think there is the great ideals of humanism is forgiveness to spread faith where there is doubt give hope where there is despair and to love to be loved so that our country wakes into that heaven of freedom where the world has not been broken into fragments by narrow dimension walls fulfilling tagore's dream i would like to end by saying that if man is not able to respect the manifested god in human being what is use of thinking about the unmanifested god i think we have to respect god, man we have to see that we give love we are pure we are truthful 
we have uh, the charitable attitude and we save people rather than taking lives. With this, I, end, I thank you very much for your patient listening. Thank you. Salam alaikum. <laughs> Freedom of religion is a central value in the U.S. There's a common belief that Americans don't care about religion. I'm here to tell you that is wrong. Americans care passionately about religion. For us, however, religion is perhaps more of a private than a public matter. For us, it matters very much that one chooses one's own religion because in the end, one chooses one's own fate and one's own salvation. I can look at my own family, for instance, and I'm not making this up, but within my own family, we have Methodist Christian, we have a Buddhist, we have a Jew, we have an Eastern Orthodox Catholic, we have a Shia Muslim, and we finally have a Roman Catholic. And that's just my family. And I submit that most American families will have in them a variety of individuals with a variety of views, nearly all of whom carry very passionately about their religion. Now, I love India. I've been coming to India for more than 30 years. I would guess that the most of you were not born when I first came to India. So I'm the old, the old experienced teacher here, and I tell you that India is changing very, very rapidly, and it's an exciting time to be here in India. India is, along with the U.S., I think the two most pluralist societies there are in the world. I run into Indians constantly who say, well, I'm here, but I'm actually from Calcutta. And I'm there, but my family is actually from Kerala. Again and again and again. An Indian is not a person who's rooted in a single place, but comes from a family, a family that can look back to other parts of India, to other ways of seeing things. And so you too, like an American, have made choices to determine who you are and why you are here. That to me is very exciting. I find that as I visit India again and again, all the way from Ladakh, Srinagar, to Chennai, that it is not a divide between those who care about religion and those who don't care about religion. It's a divide between those who believe that people should be allowed to practice their religion and those who do not. The United States is known for Coca-Cola, Pepsi, MTV, a whole lot of other things which you may enjoy, but which do not seem particularly important. But I would suggest that the United States' gifts to the world are tolerance and freedom, and the respect for tolerance and freedom. The United States wants a world where there's a balance of power between those who would be for with this version of freedom and those who would be for that version of freedom. The United States does not want a world where the United States controls any approach to freedom. Instead, we want you and you and you to work with us to find a balance that will lead us all to freedom. Therefore, the United States wishes to create the conditions that will allow you and all the people in the world to choose along with you their own ways toward political and economic liberty. The United States supports this not out of a political purpose, not out of a desire to appear good, but because 
it is good.